So today out at camp and uh, I'm going to mill up a log here. I'm going to turn this one into either a beam or just square it up so when I do mill it I won't have to take the edges off. And I've had lots of comments and questions about my beam cutter that I made. And that's it sitting there with the saw in it. So I'll go over in detail what, is, what this is. It's actually quite simple. So the beam cutter itself, this is a timber tough beam cutter. And I found trying to hold it on a two by six just takes too long and too difficult to keep consistency. So what I did is, these are pieces of hardwood and I attached them in and I got about a quarter or three eighths inch gap between that and the top of the, uh, the guide. Um, and I made myself a track, it's a two by six. I ran the router down the edge and made the slot. So when you look at it from the end, you can see the beam cutter rides in there and it can't come out. And it stays quite square most of the time. I put the aluminum on top just because I was having issues with it was thin and this was cracking. So I kind of went overboard a little bit, but I, uh, I put that on the top. So I'll put the uh, uh, saw on top and uh, basically I take my plank. I already did the first cut, as you can see. So I take the plank and I just screw it now on the flat face and I'm gonna make uh, the second cut here. So a little more now on the beam cutter. Um, normally that big black bolt is all that's there. I made these two spacers out of aluminum pipe. And this is, uh, as you can see, a square aluminum tube. Uh, I put an angle in it because I can basically stand up and run this. Uh, and I made it two piece with a pin so it comes apart so it's easy to move around if I want to. That is a bicycle brake lever and cable assembly from Amazon. It was, I think about $15 for two of them. And the key to making it work is this little piece, which is again an aluminum channel and a block of aluminum that I put together. And I'll take it apart and I'll show you what that is. So there you have it. This is just again, an aluminum channel that I cut the bottom out. I welded that block to the top, drilled a hole in it for the cable, and then made the slot so I can slide the cable through. Uh, the actual throttle control is just a hinge, which is steel, so I had to rivet it. It's just riveted on to the side. So basically, the uh, cable uh, goes through the hole and through the slot like this. The cable goes in, and then the uh, lock that I have at the end uh, with the two screws to hold the cable still just locks into this slides into that slot and curve and holds it and as you squeeze it it's wrapping up the throttle so I had to ta tape the uh, safety handle down just for simplicity of putting it on so that it's not popping up or trying to pop it off I threaded two holes you can see the bolt there that's just to pinch it onto the handle to keep it in place one there and one at the back so I'll put this back on and put the cable in and you'll see how it works so there's the throttle control in place and underneath is the part of the hinge and you can see it's wrapping under the trigger. So when I squeeze the throttle control on the handle, it just lifts up the hand, just lifts up the throttle. It's very simple, rudimentary and simple, but it works and it works actually quite well. It's, uh, it's bulletproof. Uh, a little bit, sometimes you have to play with the position and just get it just right, but for the most part it works quite well. One thing I noticed when I got this uh, Timber Tough guide, um, they have clamps to hold your um, uh, chain on, your saw on. I cut that whole piece off because no matter what I did, um, it would move and you'd end up with a chain running into the steel or something. Uh, it was not solid enough to hold a saw of this size anyway, with the torque and the vibration. So I basically just uh, ground part of it off and uh, run it right through and bolt it. No clamping. I drilled holes through the bars, so several of my bars have the uh, holes drilled through. Now when I line it up to make a cut, again, the top cut is already made. It's flattened. So I basically have the saw in the guide now, and I can just tilt the saw and see where it's going to cut when it's in the guide. So I kind of figure out where I want to make the next cut, and then I screw my board down uh, with some uh, um, deck screws just right through the center. You can see the screw standing up there. 
screw them down, make it square. And uh, then once it's down, I adjust the chain for the angle of the saw and I'll show you that. Board is screwed down, uh, attached to the log. So I'm ready to cut. The beauty of where I'm cutting here right now is I have several feet of hard snow. So the tip can go through and run through the snow and it's not a problem. Um, if there's not a good base, I'll put the log, once I mount the boards, I roll the log over at about 30 degrees. So the blade is running at about a 30 degree angle. It's not going into the ground. Um, now the key to getting the angle right, you'll see when I tilt my handle now, the saw tilts. So let me pull it back here. When I tilt the handle, the saw tilts down and that angle that you're seeing is set by this chain. So all it is, is a chain bolted to the arm, go wrap around the holding handle. And I have just like a, similar to a carabine clip and I can set that angle to what I want it to be. Uh, that's about where I usually have it. It's, uh, it's not straight. It's maybe 45 or 60 degrees or something like that. And now I can start the saw and walk it and push it right through. And there it is, uh, second side of it cut. What I really like about this is, uh, I, I guess I would have to say the ergonomics when I use it. It's not hard on the body because I'm uh, basically standing up, can almost pick my position. So the one thing that uh, I really like about this is I have other logs here that I'm gonna mill into boards. And this is really good for making the first cut and then running the uh, chainsaw mill over it because I then have a straight flat cut. It's a lot easier. I just put in a couple of screws and run this and I have my mill set up with uh, my 660 on another setup and I don't have to be switching everything around um, and with it losing a ladder, etc. If I want to do the first cut, I just screw this on and run the saw down, roll the log over and start milling. Got the uh, third side cut, just takes uh, minute or two to do each side because i'm not cutting a ton off when i'm making either a beam or setting up for boards um, again now this uh, the setup of this i hadn't mentioned and it's very important if you look at the alignment of the bar it's perfectly in alignment with the guide so there is no offset and i can tell you that as it came from the factory this timber tough was not perfect when you bolted the chainsaw in there's a, this is somehow attached to the shaft this block and it wasn't perfectly square so this bar and i'll just give you an example was probably something like this so the saw is trying to get through the wood but it can't because it's trying to curve itself all the time and it doesn't work so the one thing to make absolutely sure when you use any of these tools beam cutters make sure your bar is perfectly square with the cut you're making or you're going to tear your hair out all done have a uh, nice square beam uh, i've saved a little bit on the edges uh, to try and make it as big as i could and i'm probably going to mill this into planks now it's so easy with this uh, uh, guide to actually square it and take the sides off so I don't have to uh, square the planks after. So if you're wondering what I'm cutting with, this is a uh, Holtzforma G372. 
and uh, it's a 65 cc saw. Uh, this is what I use for the beam cutter. I have a uh, Holtz Forma uh, G660, which is a 92 cc saw that I use for the uh, milling itself. And very, very pleased with the Holtz Forma saws. They've been bulletproof. They have many, many hours on them now, and uh, I've, I'm a big fan of them. So if you like this uh, video, please like it down below. It'll help others find it. And if you don't mind, subscribe as well. It'll help me out. Anyway, uh, that's one for now and uh, more to come when we're milling.